Okay, so what question was this? Was that the first one I need to ask? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had a reciprocal function. Um, we just want to know when it was increasing, we read from left to right. So for our, our original function, the more we go right, this thing only increases. It never changes direction. So intervals of increase are from negative infinity to positive infinity for the first one. Um, for our other one, when we read left to right, if we actually look at this, um, coming from left to right, it's constantly getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And, lower and, lower. and same thing. Okay? So because so um, our intervals of increase, we started at negative infinity um, for the original function and went to positive infinity. From going left to right, our second function here, it doesn't have an interval of increase. So one option may be to say the opposite way. Because if we were to start at positive infinity and go to negative infinity, it constantly increases. Okay? So in other words, um, it would constantly increase from starting at positive infinity all the way up to 6, right? And then from 6 to negative infinity. So in other words, we're going from uh, right to left, the opposite of how we normally read. Yeah. Okay? Um, so we went from positive infinity to 6, and we know that's the asymptote, so it doesn't exist there. Mm -hmm. And then again from 6, when we start at 6, so down here all the way up to here, to negative infinity, those would be the intervals of increasing for our second function. Oh, so like instead of reading yeah, we read from right to left. That would be the best way I would seem to represent. So with this being intervals of increase, so we call this inter inter increase. These are intervals of increase. Our intervals of decrease are the exact opposite of what we read before. For our first function, it would be going from infinity to negative infinity for the first function. And for the second function, um, well, this one works. It's going from left to right. It's constantly decreasing. So we start at negative infinity to 6 because 6 is our asymptote. Mm -hmm. And then again from 6 to positive infinity, it's a decreasing function. So that would be the interval of decrease for that one. Okay, so we have another reciprocal function, and they've given us a whole bunch of things we need to fill out for it. Um, what's really important to figure out is, first of all, we can't actually even work with the function like this. In order to find the zero, yeah, we got to factor it. Did you find the factor form of this? Oh, uh, no, we're just doing the addition. Okay, so let's quickly find the factor form of this. So we have 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Okay, so in order to find the zeros, we have uh, 2x times 1 and 1 times 3. We know they got to add to positive 5x. Works out perfectly if we go straight across because we get 2x plus 3x. So in other words, our function is 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So that's what's important for in order to find the zero. So that's going to find our asymptotes also. We set both of them equal to 0. Right? Um, so we're going to get 0 is equal to 2x plus 3 and 0 is equal to x plus 1. In this case, yeah, uh, we get 3 is equal to 2, sorry, negative 3 is equal to 2x. Negative 1 is equal to x, and we get negative 1.5, well, 3 over 2 mm -hmm. is equal to x. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, first off, our zeros for this one are at negative 1.5 in 0 and negative 1 in 0. Okay? And it's it'll make sense if we actually put this on a graph. Do you our, have to put the zeros? Or is 1.5? Oh, I just put the coordinates because... On a quadratic, we always look for the actual coordinates because we know we're passing through those points. For an asymptote, the asymptote will actually be x is equal to those. x will be equal to negative 1.5. Oh, sorry, x cannot equal negative 1.5 or negative 1 would be kind of a symbolic way to represent that. Uh, let's actually put this on a graph so we can... Okay, so from looking before, we set our two zeros at negative 1.5 and negative 1. So what that gives us is negative 1. And negative 1.5, is that really what we found? There we go. Obviously, this graph's not going to work for us, so uh, let's change it and spread it out. All right, we change the scale a little, just so this will be a little easier to work with. So our intervals were at negative 1 and 
and quickly looking at the quadratic function, our a value was um, our a value was positive. So we know we have a quadratic that's swinging upwards here. So we have some quadratic that looks like this. We don't quite know where the vertex is. This is the quadratic that goes down. Comes up. I don't exactly know where the vertex is. So this considers a, a sketch. This isn't a graph. If I was graphing it, I, you're right. I need to find exactly where the vertex is. Right now, I'm just estimating of it. Um, for what we're doing, I don't think we'll actually have to know where the vertex is. Right? And our vertical asymptotes come right through those two numbers. So because those are vertical asymptotes, we have to find out a little more before we can draw the rest. But we have our asymptotes. That's the first thing we've done. Um, intervals where it's above the x-axis. So when we go to look at this, we knew a was positive. So for the quadratic, which was our original function, we're above the x-axis from negative infinity to 1.5. Sorry, negative 1.5. And then from negative 1 to infinity. That's when we're above the x-axis. So we're going to put those two coordinates in. So from negative infinity, uh, negative infinity to negative 1.5 is our asymptote. Then in between, it wasn't. And then again, from negative 1 to positive infinity, it was above the x-axis. Okay? Now, what we do need to do is with our reciprocal function, Okay, so with what we got, I got to figure out about the reciprocal function. So we knew our reciprocal function was uh, y or p at x, sorry. p at x was equal to, sorry, no, I think reciprocal is p. p at x was equal to 1 over um, 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Ah, I don't want to write it in standard form. I want to write it in my factored form just because it will be a lot easier for me to work with. Um, our factored form... 2x plus 3, x plus 1. That's important. Okay, so we have 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. Okay. Um, we already knew for our other function, but for this one, we need to figure out when our y, let's say, is positive 1. Okay? So in other words, we can replace q at x with y. So y is equal to 1 over the exact same function. And we're going to solve for the x values of that function. Okay. So in other words, we're looking for what coordinates is, or what are the values of x when y is 1. So we're going to look for these. So we substitute this value in for, for y, and we get 1 over 2x plus 3, x plus 1. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to get rid of this fraction, so think of like cross-multiplying. I'm going to move this entire bottom and multiply it by 1. So it'll actually be that on the right side of the equation, right? So I'm going to get 2x plus 3, x plus 1, is equal to the number 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now from there, I can split the equation again. We set each equal to 1. So we have 2x plus 3 equals 1, and x plus 1 1. Okay. So in this instance, uh, when I bring 3 over, it becomes negative, so I get negative 2. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get x is equal to negative 1. And in this case, we'll get x is equal to 0. So my two coordinates for when y is 1 are at 0 and 1. So that's one of the coordinates. And the other one is at negative 1. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. So, um, our above x-axis are the exact same points. And when we go to look at it after we've graphed our reciprocal function, our below the x-axis, which is here for the quadratic, is the exact same idea for the reciprocal function. So we're below the x-axis between um, negative 1.5 and negative 1 for both of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Intervals of increase. Let's make sense of this. So for our original function, going from left to right, um, 
it's constantly decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until the vertex. Whatever the vertex of this quadratic is, that's when it starts to increase. Okay? So, in other words, we need to find the vertex of a quadratic. Do you know how to quickly do that? You take the two x-intercepts, which are negative 5, or, sorry, negative 1.5, plus negative 1, and you divide them both by the number 2. Okay? So we have uh, 1.5 negative plus 1 negative, and divide by 2. One point negative one point two five. Negative one point two five. Which makes perfect sense. Um, if I had another dotted where is this one? Yeah. That's the middle number, okay? Which is at negative one point two five. So in terms of increasing from negative one point two five to infinity with the original function, it's increasing. So we would write that as from negative one point two five to infinity, this guy increases, okay? Now, um, which also means for our decrease, it's from negative infinity to negative 1.25. Um, so basically what, when you find the integrals of x and z, you just take the x and z? For a quadratic, yeah, yeah for a quadratic function. Okay. For linear, it would be a little different, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, for our reciprocal, intervals of increase, well, from negative infinity now, this is zoomed out. If, sorry, this is zoomed in a lot. If we would zoomed out, it would have this type of idea to it, okay? okay. It would be closer. Just, just because of how close our graph is, that's just so happens where the reciprocal is. If we look at it from negative infinity all the way up to negative 1.5, this guy's increasing, okay? He also increases from here to the middle, which we've already found to be negative 1.25, okay? So that's an increasing. From here down, it's decreasing, and from here down, it's de decreasing. Okay. So our intervals of increase for the reciprocal function are from negative infinity to negative 1.5, and then from negative 1.5 to negative 1.25, which is the exact middle of the quadratic. Okay. So intervals of increase um, are from negative infinity to negative 1.5, and then from negative 1.5 to negative 1.25. Opposite for um, decrease. For decrease, it's from negative 1.25 to negative 1, and then from negative 1 to infinity, that is decreasing. Mm -hmm. Let me show that again, or? No. You got it? Okay. No, no, no. Uh, when y equals 1. That was one of the things we just figured out. We got odd numbers for it. Um, let's do the reverse where y equals a negative 1. I think that's where we... No, this was our y equals 1. Let's do another y equals... Okay, so we put this in the standard form, and we wanted to find out where the one y was equal to 1. Well, we, we put px equal to 1. We brought the 1 to the other side of the equation, so we had set it equal to 0, and then we put it into the quadratic formula. When we put it into the quadratic formula, our two x values or our when y is equal to 1 are at negative 0 0.5 and y is 1 because that's what we're solving for and negative 2 and y is 1 so when we go to make sense of that on our graph it's going to change this just a little our graph and we're going to take a look at this of our reciprocal functions at 0.5 which I guess 1 okay and the other ones at negative 2 is 1 which makes a little more sense so our reciprocal function does something like that Still the same idea in terms of the sketch, mm -hmm. but what's important is that's also exactly where the quadratic is going to cross. I drew this a little nicer. There we go. Is going to cross the function. Okay, that's where they're going to end up crossing each other. So that's when y is equal to one. Our other option also, in this one we're just going to use the number negative one. So we still have two x squared plus five x plus three. And you set it equal to 0, 2x squared plus 5x plus 4. Uh, a quadratic function, we get negative 5 plus or minus the root of 25. And we need negative 4 times 2 times 4, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Minus 32. This is where this is where everything starts to make sense. And 
2 times a is 4. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we have negative 5 plus or minus the root of what number? 32 plus 25. Root of negative 7. What happens when we're looking for the root of negative 7? Doesn't exist. So in other words, when we go to our quadratic function here, our, our reciprocal function, if I remember I just did a sketch here. Yeah, it does not exist. Um, say this is where negative 1 is. Whatever our function is, it must do a turn, who knows how far below, below negative 1. Because it doesn't exist at this point. There's no value for it. Yeah. Okay, so that's how we kind of figured that out. So when we go to plug these in, y equals 1. Uh, the original function, y equals 1 at um, what is it, negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 and 1 and negative 2 and 1. And the exact same for the reciprocal function, which was negative 0 0.5 and 1, negative 2 and 1. And here does not exist at either of those functions, right? Because it makes sense if you look at our quadratic also. Our quadratic, oh, which I erased, it stopped somewhere below 1. We knew that it was um, an x value of negative 1.25. Um, we could actually find the y value. Do you want to go through that? Sure. Okay. To find the actual y value, let's uh, plug it in. Um, we're plugging this in. We're looking for the vertex value of our y. We knew that x was negative 1.25. Mm -hmm. So we get 2 times negative 1.25 squared plus 5 times negative 1.25 plus 3. I'm going to try to do this all in one shot here. Negative 1.25 squared times 2 gives us a 3.125. Uh, 5 times 1.25. Negative, negative 6.25 plus 3. Get negative 0. 0.25. Okay. I think if we put this as a fraction, yeah, exactly. So um, our vertex value is at uh, negative 1.25. Sorry, yeah, no, that's right, 1.25 and negative 0 0.125. Okay, and which is also known as this would be one and a quarter, or negative five fourths, right? Yeah. Negative five fourths and yeah. negative one over eight. Now this negative one over eight helps us to find out where our local maximum value is on the reciprocal function. Yeah. To find the local maximum, if you look here, um, which we should. So if you take a look, remember we our, our quadratic, the lowest point was eight. We flip that, negative eight the vertex of our reciprocal function. So you quickly found the horizontal asymptote by finding the limit as x approached infinity. So essentially you divided each of these you divided each of them by x. I want to do where x value was because x becomes an infinitely large number, you got 1 minus 0 divided by 3 plus 0. The horizontal asymptote was at a third. That was your horizontal mm -hmm. asymptote. And your vertical asymptote, you just have to set the bottom of the equation equal to 0. So you got 3x plus 4 equals 0. Gives you 3x minus 4. x equals 4, 3, or as the negative 1.3. And this one is... So we have our, our, our horizontal and vertical asymptotes, which are good. Um, let's quickly put them on a graph. All right, so we scaled our graph so that it was in thirds because of our horizontal and vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote was negative 4 over 3. And our horizontal asymptote was positive 1 third. 
Now what was important is we need to find our values of 1 and negative 1 to get an idea of what this function is going to pass through. Mm -hmm. So we go back to our original function, which was um, y was equal to x minus 2. So we set y equal to 1. Um, we had our equation. We set y equal to 1. Worked it out. Our coordinate ended up being x negative 3, y 1. We're going to do the same thing with negative 1. We'll walk you through this one now. Uh, y equals x minus 2 plus 4. If it's negative 1, same idea. It's 4. We get negative 3x minus 4, because when I brought that over, I had to multiply by negative 1. x minus 2. When I bring the x over, it gets negative 3x minus x equals negative 2 plus 4. We get negative 4x, 2. x is negative 2, negative 1 half. So our coordinate is negative 1 half and negative 1 half. So these two coordinates are very important. Negative a half and one. When x is negative a half, so that's somewhere in between here. Oh, I forgot to put that. That's somewhere in here. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. We're at negative one. So negative one and there. So in other words, we know it's below and to the right of this. So we have something that goes like this across these lines. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other fact, what was the other spot we found? Negative 3 and 1. So negative 3 we know is to the left here and 1, so it's somewhere up here, so we have something that looks like that. Yeah. So that's going to help us a lot with our intervals of increase and decrease. That's why the positive 1 and the negative 1 are very important to get when we're working through these functions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to set up your chart, what they did with this function is they took the top and the bottom, which was... 2 and the bottom is 3x plus 4. And they found where their two x intercepts were. Where, so we did x minus 2 equal to 0. And we've already solved this one plus 4, right? Yeah. Equal to 0. We knew that x would be negative 4 over 3. And in this one, x is equal to 2. So we have these two points. So the way they set up the chart is anything to the left. So when x is less than negative 4 over 3, and when x is greater than 2. Those are two parts of the chart. Okay. So here's one set of the chart, here's the other. They want to know what the original functions are doing, and then they want to know in between that, between 4 and 3 and 2. They want to know what it's doing in between those. So that's how they set the chart up, is by finding our uh, x-intercepts. And then for the original function, the way they do the rest of this chart now is they do the x minus 2. So for that, they do the 3x plus 4. And then I'm just going to call this, um, I will put them together at the same time, 3x plus 4. Okay. So what they've done here, so this part of the chart now, they want to know the intervals of increase and decrease. So for the original function, um, when x minus 2, when we're to the left of negative 4, is this a positive or negative? Are we in the positive or negative? So we go to look at this. We actually have to draw the function in when it says x minus 2, right? So x minus 2, that means we're somewhere down here. Okay? And we know it's increasing like this. So in other words, when it gets way down there. Oh, plug in a value for it? Yeah. Uh, okay. You can plug values in. So plug in the value of... Uh, I was just going to show you by roughly sketching it on the graph. Sketching it on the graph. So the test value for this function is we take a value that would be less than negative 4 over 3. So I'm going to take negative 2 and figure out what my y value of that would be for our original function. So y equals x minus 2. Well, if x is negative 2, let's say, negative 2 minus 2, y is negative 4. So in other words, I'm going to be in the negatives. Okay. Same with this guy. We'll put in uh, 2, so y equals 3x plus 4. Same idea, negative 2, 3 times negative 2. 
plus 4. That gives me negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Again, we're negative. Now, because what we're doing with the function is we're taking the negative value of the first and we're dividing it by the negative value of the second, we're going to figure out where our function is going to be there. So I do a negative divided by a negative, which is going to equal what? Positive. So it's going to be positive when it's to the left of it. Now we do the same idea here. Between 2 and 4 is the function 1. So I'm going to use the value of, well, so for the first one we used 1x. We'll do it in red so you know the difference. We used when x was equal to 2. Oh, sorry, negative 2. Here we'll use x at 1, and here we'll do x at 3 for our test values, okay? Um, so for our next test value, this was our first set. For our second set, y equals, we're going to use 1 instead. We use the number 1, we get negative 1. So again, we're, uh, we're negative here. Over here, y equals 3x times 1 plus 4. That gives me 3 plus 4. I get a 7. So I'm positive here. And when I do a negative divided by a positive, I get a negative in there. And finally, same idea, we do our third test, which is 3. y equals 3 minus 2. Pos I can't just do positive. The answer is 1, but it's positive. Right? And y equals 3 times 3 plus 4. That's going to give us 9 plus 4, which is 13. So we get two positives. Positive, 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 divided by a positive, is a positive. So that's how we would set up that chart.